Hey parents, um, this is going to be our last class together for um, uh, for Love and Logic. I uh, I know some of you have been with us for um, a while, really since the first of the year. Some of you may have just been picking up on class uh, the last few weeks uh, online. I kind of spent last week with a big review, and so if, if this is your first one to pick up, you're you're kind of catching the end. Uh, we had a pretty big review last week. We talked about some tips for for things at home. Uh, the week before. And so today I want to um, probably share uh, two love and logic things with you and then uh, also share some Bible things. Uh, we haven't we haven't discussed much uh, about uh, about biblical concepts behind love and logic. Uh, but I wanted to do that before we end. I just want to say, um, you know, we're kind of, you know, as a church, we're all in this parenting thing together. And, um, you know, if, if I... Uh, if anybody else can do anything to help, you know, one of the things we're here for is to is to help you uh, through this time of parenting. And so I know we've shared a lot of uh, of ideas and and, uh, and topics and tactics and techniques uh, through this. You know, I'd be glad. Again, as I said at the beginning of class, I'd be glad to to workshop things with you or or or, or help you figure out what to do in certain situations um, as as we move along. And so. Um, uh, feel free to use me as a resource. Think about the other people in the class. Um, see what they're doing and see what they're using um, and, and what they're doing. You know, another thing that I think is great in the church is just kind of look at, look around and see whose kids are behaving the way you wish your kids were behaving. And then uh, go ask that parent, hey, what did you do? Give me some advice. Give me some, give me some opinions. Uh, they may be shocked. Um, because maybe their kids are behaving better in public than they than they do at home, um, but but that's a good place to start, and so um, and so again this parenting thing we're we're all in it together. Uh, I want to talk about I, I've I've shared some about the strategic training session. Uh, the strategic training session is really a a thing you plan when a child's behavior is is consistently bad. Because it's something you need to think about, and you probably need to get other friends involved. I'm not able to play the video, but one of the videos that, uh, that Dr. Faye talks about, or shares a story about, uh, is a lady who takes little Susie to the grocery store. And um, she's, she's made this plan. Um, you know, little Susie is, pitches a fit and makes grocery time not fun. And I know probably many of you can relate to, to a situation like that. And so, as she's going to the, to the grocery store, um, little Susie is throwing a fit, uh, as new, usual. Probably on cue, by the time she gets to the second aisle, uh, she's throwing a fit. And so, at that point, Mom stops the cart, pulls out her phone, dials a number, and says, um, Susie has made shopping not fun today. Hangs up the phone, and as if on cue... Susie's friend, or well, mom's friend, uh, and it might be parent, it might be somebody else, somebody that knows love and logic takes and eat. Mom's friend comes, takes Susie, and then leaves the store. Mom finishes shopping. She comes home, probably with fun of Susie's favorite snacks, like ice cream or popcorn, eating it um, as she's uh, had uh, a great time shopping. Make, make sure Susie knows that uh, it was a fun time without her. Now, along the way with this training session, is Susie going to freak out when she gets taken by, not a stranger, I don't want us to have strangers, um, make sure it's somebody she knows, make sure it's some, a, a grandparent, another pe person in the class, another person from church. She's just going to be so shocked that mom's pulled this one on her. you got to prepare a lot for a strategic training session. Mom, before this thing happened, needed to sit down with, with the friend that got Susie and say, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this safely? And then how are you going to handle it? So Susie is probably shocked as anything when this person says, come on, uh, mom's going to shop by herself and walks out the door. That's the training session. But what do we need to do? What do we need to be prepared for? How is Susie going to react? Well, we need safety in mind. So mom would have needed to thought out a whole lot of things that are going on here. Mom needed to have thought out, okay, how am I going to, uh, how is she going to get Susie home safely? Does she have a car seat? 
she doesn't have a car seat. We need to get her an extra car seat so that she's able to take Susie and get her home safely. So does she have a vehicle that she can do that? Does she have a car seat she can do that? Make sure she has keys to the house or make sure she's, or she's taking her to her house. Where are you going to do? Um, where's Susie going to go when you leave the store? How is she going to act? Make sure the friend knows a little love and logic. This is what's great about the people that have taken this class with you. You can kind of use them because they know this. Because is Susie screaming or is Susie's upset? I want to stay with mommy. I know. How sad. If they're using the same empathetic statements that mom would have used, Susie will know, man, something something is up here. Uh, I, I, I don't know what to do because this is what I get with mom. Now I'm getting it with Aunt Margie or with grandma or with friend from church okay so um so we need to be ready for that um so that she's safe so that he, sh that, that the uh the adult that's helping knows what to do what happens if we think Susie's really gonna pitch a fit and really going to go to town and maybe get to the point where uh you know this person's not my mommy they're taking me well maybe at that point Susie Susie's mom needs to have talked to the manager or is walking out with him saying that's my daughter everything's okay and then she goes back to shopping so maybe maybe it's not just the, the snatch and grab you got to know how Susie's going to react <laughs> um, because again you don't want the police called on mommy's friend who's helping out in this training session so that's the whole idea between a strategic training session it, it's a time when you can really say okay this this is a constant problem shopping is a constant problem putting a seatbelt on, getting to school on time. We've seen several stories about getting to school on time. I remember the one about um, the parents just left the kid there. The kid wasn't waking up through his alarm. Left the kid there with a babysitter. And the kid was going to have to pay the babysitter to either sit with him all day or get him to school, right? Um, and so that was kind of a strategic training session. Now, what are we going to do that's going to make a big impact? But in order to do that, we need to kind of think through it have all of our bases covered. So it looks like we've handled this with no sweat. It's like a plan that just went off. Um, and, and, and mom and dad were calm, cool, and collective. Um, they didn't, uh, they used their empathy. Uh, they had people waiting. They had it all planned out. The kid won't know what hit them. Um, and maybe it's that, that other consequence that needs to go on. We talked about delaying the consequence. How are we going to handle this? And so we think through um, what it is we're going to do. I hope I hope that made sense as I was describing it. I was like, okay, are they, are they really getting it? The strategic training session, again, is something when there's a, a, a consistent behavior that we really need to work on. Like, and it might be bedtime. Or it might be uh, every time we go to McDonald's, it's not fun. Because the kid pitches a fit every time we go out to eat. Um, and so we're going to go out to eat and that kid gets left with everybody else or gets taken out at the time the fit occurs so that they know, man, maybe I shouldn't throw a fit. And maybe you have to plan this a couple of times uh, before they finally get it. But again, we're trying to teach them responsibility and we're trying to let them know here's what it is. So if you have one of these instances, I'd be glad to, uh, to help you work out a tr strategic training uh, plan. Um, for the specific incident um, that, that, or the specific bad behavior that you're, you're dealing with. And so um, feel free to ask or ask somebody else around, how are we going to um, create something that's going to take care of this problem? The other thing I want to, um, uh, to talk about, and we've addressed this in some, in some ways, but there's a spot in the book that just says professional help, when to seek it. Um, Sometimes our kids have different types of troubles, and troubles are really maybe beyond what we can handle or what we can understand. Uh, the pressures our kids face is tough. Sometimes the situations that they face are tough. Sometimes there is literally a different chemical balance that's going on in their brain that they need help with. And so I want you to know and Love and Logic teaches this as well, 
seeking professional help is not something that is a, a, a failure of you as a parent. It doesn't speak to you couldn't just handle it, all right? Sometimes there are things that are going on that maybe we don't understand, um, but maybe we can't fix. And so Love and Logic kind of suggests if you've read the book, if you've gone through the class, and you, you, you understand this love and logic philosophy, you've applied it consistently to your children, and you still have big problems, then seek professional help. Or if the situation has gotten progressively worse over a three-month period with no improvement inside, you know, who seek out a counselor. Ask for help. Um, we've already talked about it even in some of our classes, that even some of our kids that we have now have different things that have gone on in their history or different different issues. Seeking professional help is not something that is a failure on you as a parent. So, so please do that. And if you have a question on whether you should seek help, you know, talk to me, talk to uh, another parent who may have gone through some of these things. Um, and we can also even direct you to, uh, to some resources that might help you. And just know also that seeking counseling is not something that's going to lock you into a, a lifelong need for having counseling. Sometimes counseling sessions can be one to five sessions. Sometimes it takes longer. It really depends on the kid. It depends on how you can work through things. And so um, don't be afraid to seek professional help um, if you need it. Okay. I want to share just a little bit and, and just a few minutes on, on some biblical concepts and some of the things I think about when, um, when talking about love and logic and preventing love and when presenting love and logic. You know, there's no Bible that's talked about in the curriculum uh, or even book, but some of the concepts are just laced all the way through. I think about choice. You know, we, we spend a lot of time talking about choice. All of us want choice. Uh, all of us want to manage our own destiny. We as parents sometimes help our kids shape opportunities to make their own choices so that they're making good decisions. Um, I go back to the Garden of Eden. And I think about what God did. Giving choice is all about love from a creator. I mean, there in the Garden of Eden, God put man. And he says, I've got all of this that's yours. And there's no rules, but I want you to, there, except for one, just don't eat this tree that's there in the middle of the garden. You have access to everything else. Don't eat this one. Only one rule. Now, most of us go, we could handle one rule. We could deal with that. If it was me in the garden, no problem. I can handle follow one rule. Well, here's the deal. We can't. God, from the very beginning, gave us choice. Um, man chose wrong, and that had to break God's heart. But why did he give choice? Why was there choice? Why didn't he just say, here's the garden, you guys run around. I'm not even going to give you any rules. Just love me. Run around naked. We'd still be that way if there wasn't any rules. But what God wanted was not somebody who would follow him blindly. He wanted somebody who would choose to love him. And who would choose to follow him. And choose to live the way he would want them to live. And that's really what it comes down to us as Christians. I mean, every one of us that, that follows Christ has made that decision. To say, we want to follow God instead of following self. Now, we often make the decision of, of doing our own thing, just like Adam and Eve did. Um, but choice is something that we've been given. And I guess that's something that, you know, we want our kids making right decisions. Um, but sometimes the only way to let them learn how to make right decisions is letting them make the wrong decision sometimes and seeing how that works out. You know, I think about... You know, I think about mankind, and I think about this concept of sin. And any time we choose sin, it, it, it leads us down a road um, uh, that Paul says eventually leads to death. 
I mean, when, you know, desire and sin and when it's born and conceived, it, 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 it gives birth to death. That's a bad place to go. Anytime there's sin and think about sin, there's always consequences. You know, from a kid, we lied to our parents. We got in trouble. We cheated on a test. We'd get a bad grade. Um, you know, when there's adultery, it breaks up marriages. When there's sexual immorality, it brings out unwanted pregnancies. When there's, you know, things that we do to abuse our body, whether it's smoking or drinking or drugs, there's a physical toll it takes. And sometimes that lifestyle and that activity leads to other things. When we steal or we break the law, there's, there's a consequence of jail. All of those things I've described are consequences, right? God said, here is sin. Sin is going to lead to some consequences. Um, that's what love and logic is about, right? You make bad choices. There's consequences. And we all have to live with the consequences of our sin. Um, and the uh, earth, earthly consequences. Now, there's an eternal consequence of sin that is an eternity away from God. But there are earthly consequences. Some of the things I've mentioned. Jail, mistrust, infidelity, broken hearts, broken lives, broken bodies. Those are all consequences, earthly consequences of sin. Um, and those are things God does not protect us from. Uh, God lets us deal with those things. Uh, but here's what's neat about a loving God. You see, God loved us so much. God loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Jesus came into this world and he emptied himself as a God. Philippians 2 says he, he did not consider equality with God something to hold on to. He emptied himself. And he became man. He took on the nature of us. It says he became a slave and obedient to death, even death on a cross that he didn't deserve. And as we read about Jesus' life, I mean, the very first thing he did that happened to him in his ministry was, um, was he was tempted. The Bible says in Hebrews, we don't have uh, a Savior who doesn't recognize what we've gone through. We have one that was tempted in every way, but yet... He didn't sin. There's a great old hymn where it says, Jesus knows all about our struggles. Jesus knows because he experienced them. Jesus understands. When it says Jesus knows all our struggles, or when Hebrews talks about, hey, we don't have a high priest who doesn't understand what it's like to be a human. We have somebody who understands. And so when we come to Jesus and we say, I have really messed up. These things are going bad in my life. I've got tough temptations. It's almost like Jesus is able to say, I know. I know. That's not fun. Jesus is the ultimate empathizer. Because he knows all about our struggles. He was tempted in every way. He understands us. And he comes beside us in love. And he says, he says, follow my teaching. Take my yoke on you. And I'll give you rest. Mine, my way is easier. I'll give you rest. And so we have another choice to make. <laughs> yes, we're going to have to deal with the consequences. Yes, Jesus is our ultimate empathizer but when we choose to follow Jesus he takes away the consequence the eternal consequence we're still left with the earthly consequences but he takes away the eternal consequence and that's an awesome thing you know as we talk about you know those things and what Jesus does for us and I'm going to tie this back to our kids here we want our kids to f follow Jesus as well. That's not something you can make them do. That's not a battle you can have that you can force. 
Now, don't get me wrong, we can have them at church. You can have them at Bible class up to a point. But it's almost like how we teach them chores. It's almost like how we teach them to have to take out the trash. We model it. You know, there's us, the chore, the child, and fun. We're happy about doing this. We're taking out that trash together, and we're just hold, and they're holding that little corner. We're doing this, and we're having fun, and we're enjoying this together. We're washing the dishes together. But eventually, you know what I said? At some point, you pull out, and it's just them, the chore, and fun, enjoyment. That's how we should teach our kids faith. We go to church. We serve, we love others, we worship, we share. And it's us and the child and that faith activity and it's enjoyment and it is fun. And we're showing them that it's fun. It's not just, you guys go to class, I'm going to stay home and watch the ball game. You guys go do that servant activity as the youth. We're going to stay home, take care of ourselves. We get in. We get involved. Because then at some point, when they turn 15, 16, 17, 18, and there are other things that are vying for their attention, what are they going to do? Because now we've been removed. Is it still going to be them and church and faith and enjoyment? Or are they going to choose something different? We can't make them. When they go to college, guess what? You can't make them go to church. You can't make them have faith. You can't make them do whatever. It's important for us to model everything for our kids, especially when it comes to things of faith. That's why us being involved is important in their faith education. Us being involved in service together. Them seeing us doing church things and involving them when we can. You know, we've got all of this time that we're doing things at home now. What can they be doing in the service? And maybe they're passing out communion. Maybe they're um, singing along with us. I know we've got some, some children's things coming out um, as well where they can... Have children's church together. Again, that's things that are fun. Class can be fun. How are we teaching our kids during this time when there is no Bible class? Um, Ryan's sending out a lot of activities. Be thinking about those things, especially now when we're, when we're not at a building and we don't have great teachers. You guys as parents are the teachers. So how are we doing? How are we modeling these things? This is the way that we pass on faith. Let's pray. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for our kids. And um, again, if I can help you in any way um, down the road as, as, as this, in this parenting journey, I don't have all the answers. I didn't always do it right. But I'll, uh, I'll consult with you. Remember we talked about the good consultant. I'll tell you what other parents have done. And then I'll say, uh, let me know how it works out. <laughs> All right. I've enjoyed the class, guys. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending your son. Um, he is the great empathizer. Help us to learn from him. Help us to let our kids know we know what their struggles are because we've been there too. Help us to love our kids. Help us to share our kids. God, help us to model faith for our kids. Um, I thank you for the opportunity that we have. We've learned a lot of techniques about um, to give us some energy back, to help us to be better parents, to teach our kids to be responsible. But God, help our kids to learn um, to trust in you. Help our kids to learn that worship together is important, that service is important. Help them to learn that because we model that in our own lives. God, thank you for your son. Help us every day as we grow to be like him. It's in his name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, guys.